So, Arsenal returned to Europa League action on Thursday evening with a home game against Dundalk. In this video, I preview that match. Hello, I'm Richard. Welcome back to my channel over and over and over again, which features everything to do with Arsenal. In this video, I just want to look ahead to our Europa League group game on Thursday night at home to Dundalk. Um, just before I do that, I just want to make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. If you like what I do, please click the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as well, as it really does help it to grow. And if you've got any comments at all about the match tomorrow or anything else to do with Arsenal, please drop them in the comments box as well, because I do love to hear from you guys as well. So tomorrow then we're back in Europa League group game action, um, a, a home sorry, to Dundalk, of course. It's the first time we've ever played a side in Europe from the Republic of Ireland. Um, um, the only previous occasion of playing a team from Ireland at all was uh, Glen Torren in 1969-1970 Fairs Cup, of course, they're from Northern Ireland. And we beat them 3-0 at Highbury in the first leg, two goals from George Graham and one from Bobby Gould. Uh, although we did lose the second leg over in Ireland, 1-0. Um, Charlie George got sent off in that game. Of course, we did go on to win the Fairs Cup that particular season so that might be an omen perhaps along the way but I say this is the first time we've ever played um, aside from the Republic so um, anyway for Dundalk themselves they're currently sit third in the Irish um, Premier Division uh, they were champions in 2019 um, they did lose their last league match that was on Sunday um, away at Waterford they lost 1-0 and that of course came straight after they losing their opening group game in the Europa League as well they lost 2-1 at home to Mould of course last Thursday while we were winning in Austria now in terms of their history they were they were founded in 1903 so they've got a very long history um and in ireland they, they've one of the been most successful clubs in the, in history actually they've won 14 league titles and 11 irish fa cup so actually they, they won similar amount of trophies um to arsenal so they may be the irish equivalent of, of arsenal perhaps um they've got a new coach as well for this season he's an italian guy called filippo Gia Vagnelli. I don't know anything about him um, other than the fact he's just taken over recently this season. I say they did win the league in 2019 in Ireland. They have actually played 24 times they've qualified for Europe um, in their history. The first time was all the way back in 1963-64, the European Cup. Um, that was their first venture into European competition. Um, and then later on in 2016-2017, they became the first Irish team to win a match in the Europa League. And this season now is actually only the second time they've actually qualify for the group stage of the champion of the Europa League sorry um, they did actually drop out of the, the Champions League qualifiers at the early stage this year um, which is how they've ended up in the Europa League and they did have to qualify for that as well so they've already played several games in Europe this season already in terms of their European record um, they've actually, this will be their 80th match in European competition over the years. Of the previous 79, they've won 16, drawn 19 and lost 44. They've scored 62 goals and conceded 155. Now, they do have a little bit of a history of playing English sides in Europe. They've, they've done it twice before. The first time was in 1981-82 in a Cup Winners' Cup. That was in the second round they played against Tottenham, actually. Um, they drew 1-1 in the first leg at home before losing 1-0 um, in North London in the second leg. And in the following season, 1982-83, that was in the um, in the European Cup. They, they, they drew against Liverpool in the first round. They lost 4-1 at home in the first leg before losing 1-0 um, at Anfield in the second leg to, to get knocked out there. Uh, and prior to that, they had actually played Celtic as well in the European Cup in 1979. And they lost 3-2 away before drawing 0-0 at home. And that was in the, the third round. So um, they've got a little bit of a history there with English and British sides previously in the competition. Um, in terms of the game tomorrow, um, obviously Arsenal are going to start favourites, but the, the danger man for Dundalk uh, will probably be their striker, Patrick Hoban, 29 years old. He scored 107 goals for them in 189 appearances. So he's got a great goal scoring record, actually. Um, and since 2018, when he rejoined the club, um, he scored 61 times in 111 games. Uh, he has actually played in England a bit. He played for Oxford, Stevenage, Grimsby and Mansfield. So um, he, he knows what English football is all about um, at a slightly lower level. But he's probably going to be their, their danger man and the man most likely to score their goals. He was top scorer in the Irish Premier Division in 2019. Um, moving on to us now, I mean, in terms of our 
team selection. Um, I do think that uh, Mikel Arteta is going to make a lot of changes for this game, bearing in mind the big game coming up on Sunday in the Premier League against Manchester United. So I do feel as though there's going to be a lot of players rested um, and some other players maybe given some minutes on the pitch that haven't maybe featured much this season. Now, for me, this is a team that I, I would go with. I'm not sure it's exactly what Mikel Arteta will do, but this is maybe the team that I would go with. I would actually give the new goalkeeper, um, Alex Renarsson, I would actually give him a starting goal. He's not played yet. It'd be nice to give him a game and I'm sure this will be a good game to get him involved um, in the squad for. So I, I would pick him in goal for this game. I actually would probably be tempted to go with a back three again, mainly because we've got quite a few um, injuries in defence. You know, there's a possibility actually that um, that Callum Chambers might well um, be fit to, to play. He's been in training for a while following his, of course, his terrible injury that he suffered um, back in December. So if he's fit, I'd maybe be tempted to stick him in the team, give him a game. Um, and then maybe next to him, I've got a feeling we may well see Mustafi play. Uh, obviously, he came on uh, the other day against uh, Leicester. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him starting. Uh, and maybe the third centre-back, I think, may well be um, Said Kalazanac. Um, he's tended to play in that role, hasn't he, um, quite often anyway. Um, in terms of the, the wing-back positions, I think on the right-hand side, I do expect to see Cedric Suarez uh, give Hector Bellerin a rest. Of course, Cedric Suarez did play in their last Europa League game. On the left-hand side, actually, I've got a feeling we might well see um, somebody who's not maybe featured that much this season so far, um, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, of course, um, he has played in that position quite a bit. Not been given much game time lately, actually, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get some minutes in this game. Um, and then possibly um, in the centre of midfield, I think we'll probably see uh, Mohamed El Nenny. Um, he did play, of course, a good game, didn't he, last week? when we played the away leg in um, in Austria. So I think he'll probably get a, a start there. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Joe Willock starting alongside him. He's another player that hasn't really featured that much this season. In, in terms of the front three, um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Reese Nelson on the right-hand side. Uh, again, he's another player that's not really featured that much so far this season. I think the centre-forward position will probably go to Eddie and Ketia. Um, give him some a minutes and a start on the pitch. I mean, maybe get him some confidence for a goal or two. Um, and in in terms of the, the final player in the front three, I've got a, I've got a feeling we might well see this guy Emil Smith Rowe. Um, he's not featured for the first team for a long time. Been injured. Apparently, he's fit again now. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him getting a run. Of course, bearing in mind Bukayo Saka um, is currently injured. So um, that's the team that I can I would personally pick. I'm not sure whether Mikel Arteta might go a little bit stronger. I'll be surprised if he plays too many of the regular first teamers because we say we do have a few injuries at the moment and we have got a big game of course on Sunday uh, and of course last week after the game against Leicester Mikel Arteta was complaining that the players looked tired following the Europa League game so um, I expect a lot of changes in terms of a prediction clearly we're going to start favourites um, and it, this is a sort of game where we've got to win quite honestly and we've got to win pretty comfortably as well I, I, I'm going to go for a 4-0 victory for Arsenal I do. I say I do think there'll be a lot of changes, but it's a good opportunity for a few of the fringe players to really make an impression. Eddie and Ketia perhaps to score a couple of goals. Reese Nelson as well. We'd like to see some uh, a little bit more consistent performances from him. So this is a good chance for him to get um, a good performance in. And I say Smith Rowe as well. He, he did uh, make an impression in the Europa League a couple of seasons ago, didn't he? So I'm going to predict a four 0 victory. Um, so that's that there. A little preview of the game tomorrow night against Dundalk. Let me know what your score prediction is. Um, let me know what your team lineup would be. Do you? think like myself that um, we should play a few more and you know, fringe players in this game maybe people that haven't been getting much game time uh, so a lot of big games coming up in the Premier League over the next few weeks we certainly can't risk getting any more injuries especially in the defensive area areas and um, we're already missing quite a few so um, let, let's see what happens ever so let me know what, what you think about that uh, what your team selection would be and, and your score prediction and quite honestly if we don't win this game comfortably then there should be, there's got to be something wrong isn't there really because um, this has got to be probably the easiest game that we're going to face in this group stage, isn't it? Um, so that's that there then. Um, stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't done so already, I say please subscribe as well. Um, coming up um, this week, I'll have also a, uh, a preview of the Manchester United game 
doing that towards the end of the week. I might release it on the channel on Friday. Um, and I say lots more stuff coming out. Obviously, coverage of the game on Sunday, coverage of the game on Thursday as well. Um, we do need to bounce back, don't we? Um, two Premier League defeats in a row. Um, we need to get a little bit of momentum built up before we go to Manchester United. So uh, let's hope we can bounce back and get a good win. And I'm sure we will. I I'm pretty confident in this game. I'm sure we can take it fairly relaxed and, and not have to stress too much, hopefully. Um, but we still need to get the job done, don't we? So, um, and I say with the team I've selected there, I do believe that's a team good enough to win this game quite um, comfortably. So that's that there. I say stay tuned to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for all your support um, over the last couple of months for the channel. Um, and of course, in the meantime, as always, come on, you gunners! <laughs>